Before we start this video, I could give you this clickbaity intro saying, if you follow this roadmap step by step, you're gonna land a job in three months and you're gonna be paid $200,000. It's gonna be great. I just wanna set realistic expectations with you because I hate talking to students who have seen all of these videos online telling them that they can land a job in three months and that cloud engineering will be their first role in tech. The odds are it probably won't. The odds are it'll probably take longer than three months and it's gonna take maybe one to three years. Now, what I mean by this is that a cloud engineer role is one that takes experience. So you're likely gonna to have to land entry-level roles or roles that lead up to this to help you gain experience. It's not gonna be the one you get right off the bat unless you have contacts or referrals or people who can get you into a position to help land this role. But in saying that, I have seen students within our community follow this roadmap and land jobs as a cloud engineer that are paying three times what they were earning before by putting in the hard work. In my opinion, success comes from consistency and not from shortcuts. So this video isn't a shortcut, but instead a practical guide as how you can achieve this job in some way that's gonna be realistic for you. Now let's get into actually planning out this roadmap. Now, first things first, you gotta pick a cloud provider. There is the big three, AWS, GCP, and Azure. I made this video that covers in depth how you should choose which one is best for you. But in summary, AWS is the biggest, has the most job opportunities, and I think has the most comprehensive free tier so you can learn AWS hands-on in a free way. So if you're unsure, I'd recommend starting there. However, check that video out if you want more details. The great thing with cloud is once you master the underlying concepts, they're very transferable across the three, AWS, GCP, and Azure. They usually just have different names and they have slightly different UXs and UIs, but you'll be able to pick it up really quickly if you have a strong foundation. And that kind of leads me on to step number two in this roadmap, which is building your core skills. So in order to become a cloud engineer or have any role in tech, you need to master the IT fundamentals. Fundamentals like learning about operating systems, networking, security, programming, databases, virtualization and containers, and AI and machine learning. Now that can seem very intimidating to learn, but I'm gonna go through each of them in a bit more depth and show you ways that you can learn it really, really quickly and in the best way possible. First up is learning about operating systems. Now an operating system is essentially the software that manages your computer's hardware and provide services for operating computer programs. It's things like Mac OS, Windows, Linux. Interestingly enough, about 90% of cloud environments run on Linux itself, so often it's a good place to start. It's stable, it's secure, and it's free, which is why it's used so often. You need to get comfortable with things like command line operations, because you're not just gonna be clicking around the console the whole time, or managing files and permissions, because you're constantly gonna be locking things away and managing security. And more importantly than anything, you need to understand how processes work, because more often than not, things are gonna break, and you're gonna have to figure out why. And once you've got your operating skills down, it's time to learn network. Networking. Think of networking as the highways and intersections that connect every cloud resource together. Because you can't build anything without the right things talking to each other. And why networking is so essential is that everything in the cloud is connected. If you have a performance issue, it's usually related to networking. Security issues, usually related to networking. If you mess up networking, your whole setup can fall apart. You need to master things like IP addressing and subnets, routing and DNS, VPNs and load balances. And with all these skills I'm telling you about, the best way that you can learn them is through hands-on projects. We all know the courses where you learn a bunch of theory and then at the end, you kind of look back and you're like, what did I actually learn? Don't do that. <laughs> it's kind of a waste of time. I'd say instead, learn the theory and the hands-on practical use all in one and document it. Obviously I'm biased, but if you're wanting to learn networking for free, I definitely recommend our website where you can get a ton of hands-on projects. We'll take you through all the basics of networking and you will get documentation at the end. And I'll show you at the end of the video why this documentation is so important and how it's gonna set you up for landing a job. But the main point there is learn these skills with a tangible use case because that is gonna set you apart way ahead of everyone else who's just learning theoretical skills. You're gonna build confidence while learning from your mistakes. Now, moving on from that, we kind of talked a little bit about it in networking, but security is so, so important. And often it's something that's thought about at the end, but actually true security is integrated right from the start. And it is something that a good cloud engineer is thinking about before they even start building. And that is because cloud environments are constantly under threat and one single slip up can put your entire company or organization under risk. So in terms of the core skills you should be learning, you definitely need to learn the basics of IAM or identity and access management. That's basically controlling who gets into your system and what they can do. I'd also recommend learning things like encryption and learning more about secure network traffic. So it's basically like protecting your data as it moves between resources. 
Again, I'd recommend checking out our security projects to build these foundational skills. Next up is understanding databases because pretty much every single app needs to retrieve or store data. There's two main types that you should start off learning and that is SQL and NoSQL. SQL is for more structured data, things in rows and columns, while NoSQL is perfect for data that is constantly changing or is unstructured. But a mix of both is definitely good to learn because different apps have different needs and you're gonna need to understand the basics to get your head around it. Here are some good projects I'd recommend and I'll put all the links to these projects in the description below. Now next up you need to learn about virtualization and containers. So once your data is sorted you need to think about how to run your applications effectively and efficiently and that's where virtualization and containers comes in. Virtualization is learning things like creating multiple VMs or virtual machines from a single server and this is how cloud providers maximize their hardware. While learning platforms like Docker for containers is very very useful as this is where you'll package your app and its dependencies so that no matter where you are you can deploy it. This is really key to learn because modern cloud setups are all about efficiency and portability. Start small with this learn Docker project and then go from there. And of course, you got to learn programming too. Now, I've also seen videos of people saying you don't need to learn how to code as a cloud engineer. And from what I've seen in the industry, this is just not the case. You definitely don't have to learn how to code to start learning to become a cloud engineer. That is correct. But having skills in Python Bash is definitely going to help you in the future to learn how to automate parts of your job that should be automated. So definitely learn more about scripting, APIs, and problem solving is going to help you a lot as a cloud engineer. But I would say currently with with AI and machine learning, this is one of the best times that you can be learning how to code. And that kind of brings me on to my last point, which is learn AI and machine learning. AI and machine learning is definitely becoming one of the standard parts of a cloud engineer's toolkit. And it is massive for helping you to be able to learn things faster and more efficiently. You don't necessarily need to be able to build things from scratch anymore, but you do need to learn how to integrate and scale them effectively. In my opinion, if you're not taking advantage of AI at the moment, you're gonna be a lot slower than everyone else that is. And that's why we're seeing companies at the moment not hiring for specific roles because a person who is using AI in their daily workflow versus someone who's not is simply just going to be a lot more effective than the person who's not. And recruiters are loving seeing people who are keeping up with the latest AI trends and showing these in projects as well. So I'd recommend doing these projects here. All right, so now that you've built up fundamental IT skills, it's time to start researching jobs that you think you can target. Now, as I said before, it's going to be very difficult to get a cloud engineering role right off the bat. So I'll put some entry level roles on the screen that you can look at targeting to get into tech but maybe you already have experience and you can leverage that to land a cloud engineering role. But what I would do and what I've seen work well is take a bunch of job descriptions of jobs that you're wanting to target, put them into a Google Doc or straight into ChatGPT, and then ask ChatGPT to summarize the key words and skills that are most commonly used in all of those job descriptions. Now, hopefully from your building of IT fundamentals in part one, now you're gonna actually have a lot of these skills that you can showcase your projects but this is really gonna help you understand if there's any key gaps that you have in your knowledge. And later on, I'll show you how it's gonna help your LinkedIn, your resume, so that recruiters are gonna find you for the role and you're actually gonna get job offers. Now from there, if you do have gaps that you've identified, continue doing projects about those gaps. Let's say a particular role that you're going for wants you to learn more about Kubernetes. Learn more about Kubernetes. Do this project series about Kubernetes. Use our website to find projects that are gonna help you gain the skills that you need to land the job you want. Some of the things that you may start to notice in job descriptions are some of the essential cloud tools that I'm gonna talk about. Now, in your job research, you may find things that commonly pop up, but I'm gonna give you a few to get started. And just quickly before we jump into the next step, I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and like the video. It really helps us on our journey to building the world's best way to learn and showcase your skills. And honestly, it feels good when I'm checking the video and I'm like, yeah, people like that. So let me know if you liked it and drop a comment below as well if you want to see anything else. Anyway, moving on to the next part. One that's probably going to pop up a lot is infrastructure as code or Terraform. Manual console deployments can be slow, they can be error prone, and they're not as efficient as scale. So instead, you're going to learn infrastructure as code and Terraform is a great place to start here. This is where you'll learn how to automate your setup so they're the same every time. You'll learn about modularity, which is building reusable components so you save time and don't make as many mistakes. And you'll learn things like state management, which is all about keeping track of your resources without breaking things. You're probably also gonna see CI CD pipelines with GitHub Actions in there. Automating your pipeline is crucial if you wanna ship updates that don't have downtime and don't take hours to deploy. GitHub Actions makes it really easy to build, test, and deploy your code automatically. And then you're also gonna probably learn about version control with Git, which can feed into CI CD pipeline with DevOps skills. It's very unlikely that you'll work in the cloud without version control systems, and Git is usually the standard. Mastering Git fundamentals is going to help you with collaborating with wide teams. 
across the world. You're gonna to wanna to learn about branching strategies, so things that keep your code organized and conflict free, all about pull requests and code reviews and collaborative workflows that makes it easier to work in team environments. And that kind of leads me on to my next point, which is what I talked about earlier in the video, and that is documenting your projects. So all throughout this process here of building IT fundamental skills, of working on more advanced projects, you should be documenting your work. Not only does documentation help with showing your work to other people, to showing it to your friends, to showing it to people in the industry, to showing it to recruiters, but it also helps you understand what you're doing a lot better. So when you're doing these projects, make sure you fill in these green boxes with questions, add in your screenshots, because at the end you will get automatic documentation that you will be able to post to your LinkedIn, add to your own project portfolio, add to your GitHub. There's a range of different places that you can show recruiters, show your friends, show other people in the industry what you are doing. And that flows beautifully into the next point, which is posting your work. See, in this day and age, building an effective online presence is just gonna be a massive, massive advantage for you versus someone who doesn't have that. I've literally seen this in our community of people who have been posting their projects and then have had recruiters reach out to them because of their detailed documentation, or they're very, very impressed with the actual projects that they're doing and the skill sets that they're developing. They wouldn't have had these opportunities arise if they hadn't simply posted their work. Our website makes it super easy to post your documentation directly to LinkedIn or to X or any other social media platform. But even if you're not using our platform, I'm definitely recommend building up an online presence. And through this documenting of your journey, you're gonna meet more people in the industry that you can talk to, that you can build relationships with, so that you can build up connections with people in the industry that can help you potentially land a job. Now, if you remember one of our earlier steps, which was researching particular jobs and their keywords, this is when you can also take that information and spread Sprinkle those keywords throughout your LinkedIn so that you're building an optimized LinkedIn so that when recruiters are looking for roles, they find you popping up instantly. It's like search engine optimization, but for your own LinkedIn profile. It's so interesting to me as well, because when you start posting your documentation, people are gonna ask you questions. You're gonna learn a lot more about your projects or what you're working on from other people as well. And you actively need to be going out of your way to connect with other people, commenting on posts that you find interesting and not just the default comment replies. Make sure it's an actual worthwhile message so that you show that you're truly interested in them. Building this online presence is going to help you so much and is a massive opportunity for you right now. I did this whole video on how to improve your LinkedIn, something that I'm really passionate about. But if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below. Now, I know what you're thinking. There is obviously a part which I haven't talked about here, which is certifications and degrees. Now, certifications and degrees can be useful, but I'm sure you found that if you're applying for jobs in the tech world right now, certifications and degrees are definitely not enough. And in my opinion, those certifications and degrees are currently losing value compared to what they were a few years back. Now, my advice is learn the basics and start applying for roles. And if you're finding consistently that the roles that you're applying for require certifications, certifications or require degrees, then yes, obviously you would want to go for them. But don't fall into that certification collector trap where you learn all the theory for a certification and then don't have any practical knowledge. It's just a waste of time for you and the employer. Now, some useful certs in the industry are things like the AWS Solutions Architect or associate level certifications across Azure and GCP. And actually going for professional or advanced level certs can be useful in the long run. But for now, definitely focus on projects. And then finally, it's time to land your first cloud role. Now, if you're new to tech, then I definitely recommend going for entry level roles. There is no harm in applying to a cloud engineer role, but I also wanna give you some facts and some realities about applying for jobs and how grueling that process can be. According to LinkedIn, it takes about 100 to 200 applications for someone to land a role in tech. Now I've seen people who've landed it in much less, but I've also seen people who have applied for many more jobs and still haven't landed a role. Now it can be an extremely emotionally tough period of time when you're applying for roles and you're not hearing back from people or you're getting rejected or you make it to an interview, but you never land the final role. It's really tough. And I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be easy, it, it's not. But here are some things that are gonna help you land that first role. Now, the first thing is tailoring your resume. Again, those keywords that you found in the job descriptions, make sure you've taken those keywords and put them throughout your resume and you've shown those skills through projects. Wherever possible, highlight to your documentation or your project portfolio, as that's gonna help you really stand out ahead of other people. Here's where you're gonna also want to leverage your connections and your online presence that you've built up throughout this whole process of doing projects and posting them. Now, if you've done the build an online presence step correctly, then you will have a range of people that you can reach out to 
for references, for industry insights, for interview prep, people that can look at your resume and your portfolio. This is the time where you wanna ask for help and try and get some of those connections to help you land a job. Remember that asking for referrals from people who work within certain companies is not a sleazy thing to do if you do it in the right way, because often if those people refer someone successfully, they get paid out from their company for a successful referral. So it's actually in their best interest to refer people and it's gonna help you out a lot. At this point in time, I'd be prepping for interview questions. ChatGPT is a really useful resource for getting potential interview questions that you may be faced with in your job interview, but you should also be reviewing your projects so that you can talk about real world application as to times where you've encountered problems and then you've solved them with actually building projects that help people. One thing I'd also say is that this can be a numbers game, but don't just hit easy apply on LinkedIn. You're not gonna stand out at all to recruiters. The minimum you should be doing is applying on their website, sending the recruiter a message on LinkedIn, sending someone within the company a message or shooting people an email or using your network to try and get some sort of reference as that's gonna help increase the likelihood of you getting a job. Now, just before we finish off, I just wanna give you some last pointers and tips that are gonna help you out. Number one is join some cloud communities. Join communities like ours where there's 16,000 people that are either cloud engineers or applying for cloud engineering roles. People that are gonna share tips, give you advice, help you with projects, be there to support you when you don't feel motivated to study. This is really gonna help this whole learning process and this journey be a lot more fun for you. And it's honestly just really comforting to know that there's other people trying to go on the same journey as you are. I also want to say that accepting rejection as part of this process is so, so important. Learn from each interview, learn from each application, learn from each project. You are going to get rejected from companies, but it is all part of the process. And remember that, and remember the average hiring process takes around 36 days. So keep building your skills, keep applying for jobs week after week, and who knows what you're going to find. Don't be ashamed or afraid to look for stepping stone roles. It may help you get to your final goal of a cloud engineer or whatever role that you're going for, because those are really, really useful for building the skills and experience to get to where you want. I'd also say that you should keep building even while you're applying for jobs. You can start applying for jobs very, very early on, but keep building while you do so. This is gonna help keep your skills up to date and relevant and increase the likelihood of you getting a job. And remember that your journey is unique. It may not look exactly like this. You may have a different route and that is okay. Cloud engineering field and tech in general find rewards people who are willing to adapt and willing to learn new things. So make sure that you're one of those people. And as always, if you've learned something new, make sure to subscribe, like the video, it really helps our channel. And I hope you have a awesome week and you get that cloud engineering job.